Welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my personal YouTube channel. Um, if I look a little bit different than last time, I took a few looks at the last video and realized I look like a lunatic vagrant and had to do something about that hair. Still rocking a little mullet. Still going for that with the Firebird uh, debut, but uh, had to clean it up a little bit. All right, we're going to talk today about... <laughs> The used car market, right? We're all trying to buy and sell these things, sell the stuff we don't want, buy the stuff we do want. Uh, and I got to tell you, I think the market is changing. It's changing and it's changing quickly. Um, case in point, uh, my 2002 Porsche C4S, a 911 um, that I bought for 25 and a half grand. Um, but it was really messy. The paint was terrible. Uh, the headlights were terrible. The wheels were terrible. Solid car mechanically, but just not in great shape. And we did a bunch of stuff to it. Before we dig in there, let's just talk about the market, right? It was off the rails, hot, and growing and growing and growing over the pandemic. Obviously, we're all seeing inflation. Uh, we're all seeing how much everything is costing. And essentially, like, between regular old economy inflation and, I think, new cars not being able to uh, be bought and purchased by people because they're so behind on production that used cars got like a double bump to just being crazy, crazy money. And everything, it lifted the whole market up and it was wild for two years. But I think it's starting to finally, not crash, but it's certainly coming down. It is coming down hard. I have seen more real deals on Facebook in the last three weeks or so than I have seen in a long time. You know, I'm talking about second gen Camaros for six grand instead of 16 or 12 or whatever it was. Stuff just seemed like garbage. Everyone was going into their grandma's backyard. Hi, Grandma. How you doing? Pulling out something that they had that had no chance of hitting the road again and asking four grand for it. I saw essentially a firewall from a CUDA, like uh, blown off, quarter panels rusted to garbage, and they were like, F "Give me forty five hundred. That's fair." And it's not. That car is trash. Throw it in the garbage. I saw a nineteen seventy five nine eleven that had been burnt to a crisp and crashed like. Crashed and then burnt, burnt and then crashed, whatever it was. Car was a disaster. And they were like 2,000 bucks. And I don't think you could have pulled one piece off this car. And if you did pull it off, it would have been warped beyond recognition because of the heat this thing went through and people were still asking 2,000 bucks. It wouldn't be worth 2,000 bucks in scrap. It's not worth two grand as a modern art sculpture. It's not worth two grand to throw that thing in your enemy's backyard and make them have to take it away. It just wasn't worth it. But I think now we're seeing real value. And that's awesome. Right? Here's a couple of them. Boom. Look at this thing. Awesome. Look at that deal. That's solid. That is solid. All right? So here's what I wanted to do. I had bought this 911, and I want to see what the market's like. It's time to sell this thing. Um, so the plan was just make it look better. It's already a solid driving car. Do a couple of mechanical things to it. And I'm going to tell you something. When you are getting ready to sell a car, looks matter. How the car looks, that's the first thing people are going to see. There's two things I think that are really important. Number one, being really, really, really ridiculously good looking. Overall, inside, outside, whatever. Um, and number two, no glaring defects. Oh, thank you, my child. I made them by hand. <laughs> <laughs> that means like you can't go, oh, I want 18 grand for my Camaro, but also it needs quarter panels. Because you go, that's a the buyer's going to see that and go, I don't think so, right? You can go, oh, hey, here's my car. I want 80% of top dollar for it, but it doesn't have reverse. You can't do it. So this 911 needed a bunch of work. Number one, wheels make the car always. And this thing had had the wheels, which are... If you don't know this, a C4S is a wide body 911. So it comes with the coolest factory wheels, right? Especially for that year. Uh, they are what's called turbo twists. They are hollow spoked, very 11 inches wide in the back and I think nine in the front. They are big rollers and they're super cool. But these had been powder coated black. They were terrible, terrible, terrible. And we had to get that fixed up. So to get the wheels back into shape. Now again, really cool wheel but just detracting from the value, being gross and like dusty black powder coat and it was falling apart. So we took it to Powdered Remedies. It's a local shop here uh, outside of Philadelphia. I think they're in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And they stripped them, 
they dip they had to dip them because the powder coating was gnarly on there dip them strip them and then powder coat them and clear it in there and they came out looking awesome and we just went for like a stock style gray then we had falcon send over some of their fk 510s which are street tire i really like in the proper sizes i think it's 265 and 295 they went on there and all of a sudden the car was a million times better you bolt them on you're like wow killer that's so much better we put some dorman lugs on because the original ones were crusty and nasty and really like i cannot say this enough wheels make the car in a, in a big way on every car um so that was huge for us and then more or less we said what else can we do we've done the paint correction uh we have done the headlights and a few different things so what's left to actually be done and more or less we said hey there's some odds and ends in the car that's going to get a little wonky if we're going to ask 40 grand for this thing or whatever so went through the car uh went and found like a glove box door for 130 bucks put that on um did sway bar end links just got some new ones some fronts from Dorman. got new clips from fcp euro tossed them uh just to hold the underbelly tray on and the idea was let's make a facebook ad and let's get this thing sold all right so we just dropped off my c4s here at leading edge autosport it's a shop in west central pennsylvania um, they do service on high-end cars but they also have a dry ice blasting shop and they're going to go through the car it costs like a couple thousand bucks for a car like mine and to be honest i think we're going to see more than that in resale and it's going to look just nuts all this stuff is based on like visuals especially selling online pictures 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 and this thing's going to turn out awesome they're going to take all that grime off the engine the chassis everything is going to look as good as possible and they're not strangers to porsches if you can tell it's a common one here there's oh, i've seen a lot of them i've seen a lot of them all right let's head in yo popping in here to say that we have stay tuned merchandise just dropped Got my Angelo, Angelo's Garage Gym shirt, the new Stay Tuned Lightning Bolt shirt. This stuff is available at my Shopify. The link is right here. Boom, go and get it. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, back to the show. All right, they've had the car for about two days, and I cannot, I literally walked in and said, is this, is this my car? Because it looks most of it looks brand new this is a car with a hundred thousand miles on it um that's been pretty well taken care of but a hundred thousand miles is a hundred thousand miles and it looks outrageous uh the exhaust looks great the suspension the subframe you could i if you were like that's brand new i wouldn't i wouldn't question it it looks outrageous lines the whole car is nuts and we're gonna sell this thing and i'm telling you they said it took about a whole day it's like 2,000 bucks-ish is what you pay for it. Uh, and it's mind-blowing how good it looks. This is crispy, tasty, brand new looking. It's stupid. What I love about this process, not that I'm like some tree-hugging hippie, but it's just CO2. It's liquid CO2 in solid form. And they said that uh, essentially this stuff was a byproduct of some refinery process so they get co2 was going to release in the atmosphere anyway and put it to good use it's awesome it's way better than 50,000 cans of brake clean or blasting a bunch of glass silica around your shop this rules and they said they used 400 pounds on this car uh, which sounds right because it was pretty grimy and what's fun is they saved me one little spot here on the transmission i'm going to try some blasting I can't hear him. I'm just going to point this thing.
That is fun as hell. I could definitely do this for a couple hours and just geek out. It's like adult coloring. Yeah, that's the coolest. So yeah, it's back. I think it looks really great. And it's time to take it on one last rip and I'll tell you why when we get out there. All right, so essentially with all of those things done, it was time to sell the car. And there are obviously a bunch of great auction sites bring a trailer, cars and bids, those sort of things that I think guarantee you top dollar, but just to see if I could get it sold myself. Um, and I mean myself, like just tossing it on Facebook, not like, you know, putting on a bunch of different social media posts, stuff like that. Um, just to see if I get it sold because I, you know, I felt like time was an issue. I feel like the market is changing pretty quickly. And I put it out there in the world. I did some photos of the thing after it come back from, you know, getting the wheels and the new tires on it um, and the wheels being powder coated and really looking like a complete car. And I put it on just Facebook. I'm on a couple 911 buy and sell groups. Um, I really feel like that's a great way to get, um, to find a car you want. There's like a buy and sell group for pretty much everything. There's even ones that are like cheap drag cars, cheap drag projects, stuff like that on Facebook. That's, I belong to about a billion of those. Um, like every car we've worked on in the past couple years, I'm in a, you know, Facebook group for it. So I went on the 911 buy and sell group. There's a 996 group and I put the car up. I didn't go nuts. I said, here's what it is. You know, um, I, I stopped driving it at under a hundred thousand miles. So I can say I had 99,000 miles on it. Cause I feel like psychologically that third digit is a, it's going to hold you back. It's going to be like a problem in some people's brains. So uh, I was like 99,000 miles, IMS is done. I dug through all the service receipts that I have. The air oil separator has been done. The clutch has been done in a reasonable, like the last 40,000 miles. Um, and it's a very solid car. And now that we've made it look really good, look, it came very rough. The headlights were gross. The paint was gross. The wheels were gross. We fixed all those things. Um, and I got a lot of like, hey, great price, solid car, good listings, which is, you know, a nice little pat on the back but it doesn't put money in my pocket. So after a few, and I, I really feel like this is what happens with cars. Um, either you sell them in a couple days or they're gonna sit for a while. And it sat for like a week, maybe more. And the problem with selling cars online is that you get a bunch of boners who want to either tell, like just talk, hey, this is cool, can I do this, can I do that? They wanna trade you very random stuff. Um, you know, I got a bunch of E92 M3 offers, several of those for some reason. One guy with an R32 GTR, which is a car I would love to have, except that like a lot of them are very rusty and falling apart. And in those Japanese auctions, a lot of like wild hanky panky goes on to, pr to present those cars as good solid cars and get them sold. And I wouldn't trust it without like really getting involved in it. I didn't want it either way. Um, I'll have one if I can ever find like a really dope one. I'll probably get it from Tommy F. Yeah, or something that dude bathes in the skylines daily. Um, but essentially, I, after like a bunch of these interactions, I got some Yahoo who was like, hey man, uh, why is this price so high? And I'm like, it's a C4S and it's manual. You know, it's, this is about what it's right. You know, I, I listed it at 38,000, which I think is fair. I'd seen them much, lo you know, much higher. Um, and a little bit lower, but really for much more rugged cars. So I said, 38. This guy can say, he's like, how about this one for 25? And he'd send me a car that wasn't a C4S or this and that. And I'm like, listen, man, I don't have time for this. I don't, you know, I'm not here to argue with you. If you don't understand how cars work, I don't care. Like if you're gonna buy it, great. If you're not, please let me go on my day. He keeps sending me all the other cars. Eventually I tell him, oh, suck my I'll murder your family. We have a, a Facebook, we have a, like a text war. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I pulled the listing down and I'm like, forget it. I'm going to get the last piece of this puzzle, which could add value to this car without doing a bunch of work to it done. I'm going to get this thing, you know, ice blasted, dry ice blasted. Cause number one, I think it's super cool. I'm very interested in the process. And number two, like the car will just be pristine top, bottom, in and out, like really as good as, as we can make it. Um, so we did that. And then the goal was, I'll put it on the bring a trailer or there's a PCA auction or cars and bids, one of those, and just let it ride. Um, and that was my plan. And right before we took it to dry ice blasting, 
uh, I got I got an email from what seemed to be a serious buyer, and I was like, holy hell! Um, and I couldn't connect with this guy on the phone. I tried a couple times. We're, you know, we're both busy guys. And then eventually, he was like, just give me a call. Let's figure out the price and see what's what. I was out with my kids. I was chasing them around the playground while I'm on the phone. And it's best case scenario. Hey, I really am interested in this car. I know the car. I think it's good. I've watched the video. I know where you're at on price. I think you're very close. And I said, yeah, man, let's, again, solid car. You know, I have a little bit more of a public profile than most car sellers. I wouldn't put out some junk. I really like this car. And he said to me, how about 36? I said, 36 sounds great. That's not a low ball offer. That's a reasonable scenario. I think that's cool. And again, like, the market is changing and I want to get it sold. You know, it may be worth 30 grand in a couple months. It may be worth 50 grand in a couple years. But it doesn't matter. I want to be out at this price point, right? Um, so that's what I said. Sure, shoot me a deposit. He shot me a deposit. And uh, this thing is off to him in about 24 hours. So that's why we're in it, obviously, zipping it around. Because why not take one last rip? in what is essentially somebody else's 911 at this point. Um, but I'm happy. The car is solid. Um, this dude should love it. I really feel pretty confident that he's going to get a nice driver uh, car that we'll probably still appreciate because Porsche seems somewhat immune to the market. But regardless... Mm, let it, we'll let it sing one more time. Oh, we're going fast. just a good, solid, fun car. So, yeah. Take that money and see what's next. But this has been a really good car. I don't think I made, like, any real money on it. More or less, I bought it at 25 and a half or 26. Uh, you know, paint correction costs a couple thousand bucks. Dry ice blasting is a couple thousand bucks. Powder coating is a grand. Tires are couple blocks we also did a couple knickknacks just put a, a glove box handle on it you know some stupid things so I think I'm probably in for 32 and some change plus our time uh, you know maybe we made a few thousand bucks but nothing crazy it's certainly not my last 911 where I bought it for five grand put five grand into it and sold it for 19 that was a different scenario but it was just like a deeper a deeper a better buy and it was the market was different then. You know, you could buy these cars running and driving for 13, 14,000 bucks, and that is tough these days. But anyway, that's the story of my 11. We're going to send it on its way. We're going to buy a bunch of Cutlass parts, a bunch of Firebird parts, and keep rocking. Here's what my uh, advice to everyone trying to buy a car on Facebook is uh, don't be a douchebag. It's that simple. We're all trying, like, I, I love being reasonable with people. You're like, hey, I'd like to do a little, you know, can you meet me here? Can I take a couple thousand bucks off? Whatever it is. And you know, like you don't want to get taken advantage of, but like, man, when you find somebody that is a reasonable person who's not trying to kill you, it's the best. It is the absolute best. Because look, we're all car people. We're all trying to do this thing. I love this car. I hope he loves this car. Like, that's that's the vibe. It's not, oh, I'm gonna kill you on 500 bucks. You know, it's like Let's keep this whole car thing going, right? Also, like, I'm going to drive one more time real hard. All right? This thing honks pretty good. Mexico is lovely this time of year. Incredible. The closed course in Mexico that we're definitely on and driving in. Beautiful. Beautiful. A lot of foliage. Yeah, this is a good car. It's a good one. I think we'll probably buy another one after this. Make it more insane. But... 11s are good. I wonder, I do wonder, like, had this been a C5 Corvette or something, would it have been as easy to sell at this point in the market? But they seem to be holding on strong. You know, most cars that are that people really want that have bumped up are kind of staying up. 
but I don't know how it's going to last forever. Okay, so I feel like after doing quite a bit of work to this thing and selling it for just about what I have into it, it sort of tells me the market isn't exactly skyrocketing like it used to be. Can you still put together a very decent car and sell it? Yes, but is it like, oh, it, it, what's, you know, 100 grand today is gonna be 150 grand in two months? Absolutely not. I don't think the market is there anymore. I'm happy with this car at this price. Essentially, I feel like I've gotten out of it what I've put into it, which is really, you know, let's call the market strong, but it's definitely changing. Okay, that's the thing I feel like I've seen a lot of good deals popping up on Craigslist. People generally seem to be more desperate to get things sold. And if you're, if you're trying to sell a car that you are hoping to make a couple bucks on or just, you know, really sell while the, the values are still pretty high, I would say do it now. This thing is going to a very reasonable guy at a very reasonable price, and it's a solid car that I can kind of stand behind. And I'm not trying to, you know, scam anybody out of an extra 15 grand. I feel good about this. It's solid. I try to be a good dude when I'm selling a car. And I think, you know, it's really just a matter of this thing's going to a new person who's going to care for it. I'm going to take this money and buy a bunch of hot rod parts. You'll see it in the Cutlass. You'll see it in the Firebird. Um, but really, this has been an awesome, awesome car for me. It's just not exactly what I want right now. What I want right now is a bunch more rough and rowdy hot rods. So that's it for this episode of Stay Tuned. If you're trying to sell a car, I suggest you do it now. All right. And if you want to buy a car, I think you wait like a couple more weeks and you can find some good deals. But let me know what you guys think, and I will see y'all in the comments. One less Porsche down, lots of hot rod stuff coming.